So now that we have all the parts created, we need to bring these parts to, together and create an assembly. So we'll go back into an inventor and we'll simply click new and we'll stay in the English, but we've created the parts we use the inventor IPT file. In this case, we want to choose the standard inch IAM, an inventor assembly file. Click on OK and we have a whole new set, set of tools here. <clears throat> so, we want to place the component. So we make our way to the top left hand corner and this button currently says place from content center. You want to click on the down arrow and simply choose place. It will bring up to, it will display the place component dialog box. And it's automatically going to the project that was preset. And what I want to do, and if I look at this assembly, is I typically imagine if I had all these pieces on a table in front of me, which two pieces would I bring and place in my drawing first? In this case, I'm going to bring in the piston bottom and the base rod first. So I simply say or select piston bottom. And I can place multiple instances of it, but in this case, I just want one, so I right click and select done. I'll pan this over a little bit using my middle mouse button, click and hold and drag, and then place. And I typed a mistake here, I got base bod, but should say base rod. And I'll say open, and I'll place this particular rod there. Once again, I have a choice of placing multiple instances of it, and I'll right click and select done. So in order to place these two parts, we what we do is we add what are called constraints and we limit the degree of freedom it can move. At this point, I can click and hold this base rod and it moves everywhere in space. As I add constraints, we're going to be able to limit the amount of freedom it can move. So we choose our constraint tool and we get a dialog box. And we have several types of constraints, motion constraints, uh, transitional, and so on. And a type here is, is a mate type with a mate solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the center axis of this base rod. And I'm going to make my way and select. And notice as, as I hover and move my mouse, I want to get and display the center axis of that hole. And I select. A little noise also occurs when you get it right there. So I've now aligned the center two axes. Remember to click apply in order to accept that constraint. I'm going to cancel out of this just to explain to you a little bit more about constraints. I've now aligned the center axes of this base rod and the center of that whole axis. I've limited the degree of freedom that this base rod can rotate and slide in and out, but it will always slide along the axis of that center hole. So I'm going to place another constraint. It's going to be the same type mate, but this I'm going to create a flush constraint. And I'm going to make sure that this face and this face is always flush. Click apply. Cancel. The next object I'm going to bring in is <clears throat> the finger. So I simply go to my place tool, top left hand corner, place component, choose finger, click open. Click to place it on screen. Now it would be most new users would be tempted to go and place another three of these objects. In this case I typically tell people only work with one thing at a time and, and don't clutter the screen. So I'm just going to right click and say and select done. I'm going to start my constraint tool again. I'll move this dialog box over here. And I'm going to use the same constraint mate with mate. And I'm going to select the axes of this finger in here. Now, depending on the view that you're at, it can be difficult. Don't be afraid to use that the middle mouse button, the wheel, to zoom in and out. So I want to zoom in and pan, and so I can select that axis and then zoom out 
and zoom in here, make sure I get that inner axis. You notice that you can get all types of constraints here, but I want that axis there. I'll zoom out. Looks good to me. I click apply. Now what I want to do is I want to mate. I want this face to always touch the inside of this face here, but I can't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my free rotate tool to actually rotate it. Ro they're in the middle of the command, right click and say done, and click that face. If by chance you make a mistake in your selection, do not cancel out. Here's your selection. This was my first selection, which is blue, which you'll see is that side there. And my second selection is green, which is this inner face. If I wanted to reselect that inner face, I can simply click on that number two there and simply reselect it. Click apply, cancel. And as I rotate this around, you'll see now that I can grab and move this arm and I've limited the degree of freedom to work the way we want it to work. The next part that I want to bring in, play, I'm going to go to the place component tool, is the top piston. Open and I'll just drop one instance in there, right click, select done. I'm going to place a constraint on that axis and once again I'll zoom in to make sure I get the axis that hit apply cancel out of that I now have this link to here the next part that I want to bring in place component is a lifter arm I'm actually going to bring in two at this point because I need to and I'm going to use my constraint I'm going to zoom in tight onto this elbow of this finger arm here. Pick that object. And pick the center of that object. Apply. I'm now going to make this face with this face, keeping it perfectly aligned there. Apply. Then I'm going to zoom into this axis of the top lifter hole here. Uh, sorry, piston top, zoom back out, zoom back in, and I'm zooming in by putting my mouse where I want, hit apply, cancel, and I'll just grab this finger, and you can see that it's working now. So I've got it partially working here. I'm going to use my rotate tool, spin this around a little bit, here we go. Maybe just like that. Start the constraint tool again. I'll zoom in using my wheel to grab that axis there. And then I'll zoom out. Zoom into this second lifter arm, grab that axis. Zoom out, zoom back in. Oh, zoom back in, there we go. Hit apply. And I'm gonna make this top face with that face, apply. And finally, I'm going to zoom in here, select that axis, and select that axis of the lifter arm again. Apply, cancel, and we've got one connection happening. Now, you can go ahead and simply place, I'll just put one pin in here. I'll just put pin two in here, say open just put one of these pins in here just to show you how the pins and you can go about putting the pins in quite simple use the constraints select the axes select the axes apply and then I'm going to flush that face with that face apply cancel and I place the pin and you can put the other two pins in quite easily same process now you can easily go about doing that another four times or you can use the pattern tool. With the pattern tool, we can select what feature. So I'll select that lifter arm, that lifter arm, this finger, and that pin. And I'm going to choose circular pattern. And I'm going to choose the axis direction. I simply choose the base rod. I'm going to make sure it's four, they're 90 degrees apart, I hit OK, and I've created the assembly.
just like that. And when I slide this, this all works. That's how you create an assembly.